In this video, I'm going to show you how me and my friend Nick made this beast of an axe. Right, buddy. Yes. Give it. Yep. 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 Lighter. Lighter, sorry. Lighter, yes. Here, light. One more light. Thank you. Yep. 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 Yep.
Hey, Nick. <laughs> organized. Always be organized when you're forge welding. Carefully now. Yeah. 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 Hey, so we've made it to the point where we have the three main pieces of the axe um, and now our job is to forge weld them all together. Uh, so we're going to start with these two um, and then we'll add the blade. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so we're at the critical stage now where we have the body and the collar and everything done and we need to put on the blade. And what we're going to do is that we're going to heat up both sections at the same time to welding temperature. And we're going to run in here and Nick is going to place the edge and the blade on this little anvil here and I'm going to place the body on top of it and hopefully I can weld it together and we get a completed axe.
way better. Yeah? Go. Thank you so much for watching the video, I really hope you enjoyed it. So in today's video, we made this, which is a... Uh, what is it? It's a traditional Swedish uh, 1700. So it's a, a hewing axe or a timber bila in Swedish. Um, and they're used for making uh, log homes, which were common throughout Sweden and continue to be today. And boy, was this a challenge. <laughs> was a beast. <laughs> we Looks like a beast. We, we had like... We had a set time that we needed to finish this on and I've tried this once before a long time ago and before I even knew what I was doing. But doing this now, oh, especially when you're on a time, what do you say? Like a time, time crunch. Time crunch. That was insanely stressful. But I think we managed to pull something out that's, well, decent at, at least. And... Uh, I think I think we're pretty happy with it. Yeah, I mean it captures the look absolutely, the style. It's got the long collar, which is common with the early um, Swedish timber bilas. Uh, ah, and it's the form worked. I'm pleased. Yeah, me too. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about the history behind them? Why, why did they have these long collars, for example? So um, in the Viking era, we start to see that the, that the eye of the axe is not supported enough and that, that breaks the handle. So the Swedes and a lot of other European countries came up with the idea of if you increase the surface area that the handle has inside the eye, uh, the handle will be more durable. And so this is a common practice throughout Europe. Um, the French do it slightly differently, the Germans do it a bit differently, but the Swedes had these long beautiful handles and you also see this in uh, Finnish examples. And it's also the case that sometimes they didn't wedge it, right? Because they could easierly switch handle. Is that yeah. a myth or is it true? It's a long thin taper, so there's tons of surface area and lots of friction inside. Um, so if you broke the handle, you could switch it very easily because you didn't wedge it and it goes to quite a small end. So. Ah, right. Yeah. And the most common, at least in some places in Scandinavia, wood available was birch, which, which is not the strongest wood that you could use for a handle. Yeah, but it's great for a handle because it's more flexible, oh. um, so it absorbs the shock of, of hitting the wood and also it's easy to carve. So if you're in the field and you break a handle, you can carve yourself a new one with an axe head and uh, and a knife. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I've heard that before that they used to, like uh, that this area where I'm in right now, where I'm from, birch was the most common wood, mo the, the most common handle material back in the day. Uh, and I think, is this a myth or not? But the, the, the longer handle also like helps stiffening the birch a little bit. Is that true or is I it mean, just a myth? I mean, it supports it. You want the flex back here where your hands are to absorb that shock. Yeah. Um, but you need the stiffness because you're accelerating that mass into the tree. So. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Uh, so I've, I've been chasing this axe for a long time. Um, there is an article in a, a book about how to forge this axe and I studied that. This is the fifth version of this axe I made. The, the first time I made one, um, I flew to France and was part of a large organization that did a week-long project making these axes. And I made two of them with a, a Norwegian smith named Terry Grant. So. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. This definitely was a challenge for me. And uh, I was very happy to have Nick here with me during this very, very tough but fun challenge. And I hope this inspires you to try something yourself and get out there and blacksmith something. It's 
it's good for you. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Like the video if you liked it. If you want to check out more of Nick's work, you can find it in the description down below. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Hey, dog.